So Kyle, well, Kyle, we moved the two modules from under the rear seat of air to under the front seat. You know, the two modules are higher up, we move them forward. So we've got super flat here, and we've still got a 22 module pack enabling over 40 miles of road. This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantire.com slash EV. This video is also brought to you by Magna, forward for all. And welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me at the Los Angeles Auto Show where Lucid is debuting the Gravity, their SUV for the first time. In this video, we are gonna check it out together. I'm gonna tell you everything we know about this vehicle. And of course, just like we did with the Air, the Gravity is gonna be a car that we cover closely through its final engineering stages into series production. And then of course, we'll do all the range tests, charging tests, road trips, all the fun stuff I can't wait to do with this vehicle. So let's get into everything we know about the Lucid Gravity. And of course, as much of a tour as I'm able to bring to you today. Holy smokes, Jordan's behind the camera. Yep. The new Gravity. Can we just start with how epic this looks? It looks fantastic. This is one of the best looking SUV EVs out there. It, like, okay, so the Air, yeah, maybe styling-wise I didn't super get on with. The Sapphire looks incredible. That's the really spicy tri-motor version. This thing, like, dialed up to 12, totally dialed. It's amazing. I'm just so excited. I can't even come up with the words. <laughs> it looks awesome. They've nailed it. You're feeling the gravity of the situation. Let's get into <laughs> it. <laughs> into it. Okay, before we get into the car, let's just backtrack on Lucid a little bit. Let's show everyone the display, things that are going on here. About three hours ago, Lucid unveiled this car for the first time, and the, I had never seen a more packed thing here at the LA Auto Show. People get Lucid, they love Lucid, and wow, the unveil of this thing, super exciting. There was a crowd all the way beyond Kia down that way, just going forever when this thing was unveiled. So we couldn't even get up to the car until now, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, so just on that, Jordan, what's been the public impression like just from the murmurs we hear around? So much buzz. Everyone's just freaking out about this thing because, as you know, it's America. So all we want is SUVs. And so Lucid finally is giving us the SUV. And it's second, which I think makes sense. They're working out some of the bugs with the sedan thing. And now they're bringing the SUV, which is probably more mass market appeal in general in the U.S. But I don't know. I think everyone's just freaking out. They're loving it. There were some photos leaked earlier and everyone shared the heck out of those, too. So, yeah. <laughs> So, so hit me with the specs first. The price is seventy nine thousand and a bit. It's just under eighty thousand yeah. dollars starting. Basically be, eighty four hundred forty miles of range from one hundred twenty kilowatt hour battery pack. But we're not sure like what versions these all are, right? Yeah. So we, I, I've already seen that this car is badged as a Grand Touring, yep. which is the one down from top. That's like the series production maximum. And we know there's gonna be a Dream Edition. That silver one's a Dream Edition. Yep. Um, but we're not sure of what battery pack sizes go into everything. So I don't know if you'll get the 440 miles of range at the 79999 number. Yeah. Um, but these are all the things we'll have to play around with. It should qualify for the tax credit yep. because uh, built in the U.S. and under 80,000 for the standard car. We know air suspension's optional. We know at least with the 120 kilowatt hour battery, which is I think maybe one more module than the Lucid Air um, because the Lucid Air is 112 kilowatt hours in the um, Grand Touring, 116 kilowatt hours in the Dream Edition. This has another four kilowatt hours. Is that just software to unlock more buffer or what do they do? I'm not sure. Um, these are all the things we'll figure out over time. What's the operating voltage range of the vehicle? They claim over 900 volts. We know the Lucid Air Grand Touring, out of spec Dave's old Lucid Air Grand Touring, would full <laughs> charge to 924. So yeah. this might go higher. DC charging equipment can't really go above 950, uh, most of it at least. Some of them hit 1,000, very few. So I think they have to you know, work within the confines of existing infrastructure here. We should also mention Lucid is co uh, committed to North American charging standards. So they'll have access to superchargers starting in 25. We did a whole podcast on that, and I'll leave that link if you're interested. So we have zero to 60 and how fast they said 3.4 seconds something like that so mid threes Five. which is great yeah. yeah awesome it's just the dual motor version yeah and air suspension optional 
Yep. Um, and it let's tows, just show the viewers. It tows like a plane. Well, they, they, right, they towed a plane with <laughs> Which it. the Model X did that too. It's like, yeah, sure, oh, yeah. it can do it. But its rated towing capacity is like, I don't know, 6,000 pounds. This is the Grand Touring one. Perfect color. I don't know what it's called, but this is the spec. Everyone get your gravities with this color because yeah. it's so good. Um, they got the surfboard upside down for more range. Uh, so reducing uh, rolling, uh, I guess, aero drag, which is kind of cool. There's so much to get into with this car. And of course, the buzz at the LA Auto Show, everyone's around. But it's hard, it's hard to sometimes get the scale. But as we're looking at it right now from the side, this is the exact same dimensions of the Model X, more or less. Like right. 0.5 of an inch in each, all three dimensions. Lucid said 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour in the EPA cycle. I assume that's in whatever most efficient variant you can get. Yep. Um, my guess is only dual motor to launch at the moment because, again, Grand Touring and Dream over here. These are the top end models. They have not mentioned any other battery capacity other than that 120 kilowatt hours. I should mention it might only have that one battery, but it's got a pretty large front trunk. Um, 11 cubic feet up front or eight cubic feet, sorry, up front, which is pretty good. Yeah. And a huge trunk, huge rear door that opens 90 degrees. I'll insert a photo unless they have this silver one. No, come on over here. We have to squeeze around everything. This silver door is opened up just about 90 yeah, degrees right that. here. If we can squeeze through there. Yeah, I can and see it. That's good. So this one is the dream edition. You can see the charging port here. We're not allowed to touch the cars, sit in the cars. Certain other, uh, you know, content creators, YouTubers, Forrest had access to one early. So there will be better videos than this one online. So I <laughs> highly encourage you to check those out ahead of time. Here's a great view of the front of it. And, you know, it's got a stubby front nose, but I think it works. What do you think, Jordan? It looks so good. I mean, I, I just... The dimensions are so good. The whole thing as a whole is kind of stubby, kind of ID4-esque, like as a whole, but just looks better in every way. And I don't love the Lucid Air rear end. I'm not sure this what you see it. with ID4 in this. <laughs> it's kind of the, the <laughs> nose just like doing that thing. Like, yeah. I don't but know. I also want to just bring your attention. I don't want to get in the way of other people's filming, but you'll notice a secondary headlight unit down here. I think these are going to be the main beams and high beams, just like the existing Lucids. I'm not sure what this is going to be. Maybe a turning light? Corning, cornering light, yeah, something yep. like that. Unsure. They have physical parking sensors, no vision only on this particular one. Looks like they still have their LiDAR in the center there as well as camera, yep. um, would be my guess. Again, we don't know all the details on this. We were just discussing towing. It can tow 6,000. 6,000, something like that, yeah, 6,500 6, maybe, but yeah. yeah. Uh, and over 1,500 pounds of payload. Yeah, which is so great. So that's all re very reasonable numbers here. Supposedly, Model X can do 5,000. Pounds, I yeah, think. yeah, and this is bigger interior storage than Model X and even Rivian R1S. Even though it's smaller than the R1S, it has bigger interior storage capacity. So the yeah, packaging see if you is can really squeeze in and show everyone the interior. We're not able to sit in there, but it's got this Squircle steering wheel in there, <laughs> and um, you know it's got a what's the display size on this, Jordan? Thirty-four inch six K OLED display. I mean, that's like the leading edge display tech. Yeah, it's very fantastic. Cool. Seating materials look great. We know they use natural leather in there. I'm not sold on the steering wheel shape, <laughs> especially in photos, but looking at it here it's in person. Better in person. Better it's in got person. like a sort of clear situation on the touch pads, which I don't love touch pads on a steering wheel, but if they do it really well, then I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, a huge windshield canopy in this one. I don't know if you can get low and look at the interior view. Kind of. Yeah. That's really... That is pretty crazy for sure. It's got that center light strip, which I love. Um, also interesting cameras here on the B pillar which is an interesting approach. Uh, seven seating optional, we should say as well. And the biggest thing, Jordan, the, the, the stat that I love is that this has more interior space than an R1S. Which is which a is bigger vehicle. Bigger. Yeah. So what are they giving up? I don't know. Is the window double paned here in the black? Can you tell? Single pane? Looks like it. Uh, no, double paned, yep. We can you have. Okay. So right now, I believe both vehicles are on 22 inch wheels. They're using a Pirelli. Oh, this one's on 23s. Nice. Yeah, you get 20 to 23 is the range of wheels. I don't know how many sizes within that range, but okay. these are huge. <laughs> Secondary parking brake for the E, um, you know, parking brake. It's not integrated in the rear caliper, which I don't know if the sedan is set up this way or not. It's a five lug set up on this particular one, an OE Pirelli uh, P0. And uh, you can see the LM1 badging there, electric adapted with the uh, foam on the inside. This one's equipped with the air suspension. I can see just the top of that air chamber in yeah. there. Um, the Bear really know, works with the SUV. Has a pretty <laughs> big height adjustment. They mentioned there's some off-road cred on this particular one as well. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, let's just take a look back here in terms of cargo space. 
you can fit four people and two bikes? Two bikes and four people, or four people and four surfboards. Like, there's a lot of variation in those metrics, but huge interior space. And the glass roof, of course, helps with that. Yeah, I mean, this is the right car at the right time. We, I mean, why didn't Lucid launch with the SUV first? It could have made more of a splash, but... But the numbers, the numbers I think, was the yeah. thing. They wanted to show, okay, we have the best drivetrain technology, we have the best efficiency, and they, really, you can't do that with an SUV. Yeah. This has a bigger battery than air and significantly less efficient than the air. But in the SUV category, this still should be one of the most efficient offerings out oh, there. Yeah. But we with, were doing, with, with the sedan, they did the 500 mile splash, which right. I think gave them a lot of huge press, which they can't quite hit with this. Yeah, 520 miles yeah. on Dream Range, which you can't buy anymore. So now it's 516 miles. <laughs> but still over 500, yeah. which they can't hit the SUV yet. But. Right. You know, I actually like the 22s on this thing. Yeah, it looks pretty good. fit pretty well as well. I don't know. This is the spec I would do. I think this 23s in great. Colorado would just kill your tires. Potholes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> blowouts every week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's just take a look at some of the interior scapes. I know I want to show you everything that's on display here. So let's squeeze through. We'll get another nice view of this front trunk with a front seating position, a little fold down accessory in here, which looks great. Seems to have uh, three 120 volt NEMA 515 outlets. I'm not sure if they're 515s or 520s. Yeah, they didn't specify, just 120 volts and then uh, yeah. six USB-C ports, which we don't know if those are power delivery, but it'd be great if they were. So you yeah. can charge a MacBook at full speed. Like Mercedes EQS SUVs. Yeah, Mercedes does that very well. 100 watt continuous on those. Here's the four interior um, color combos, I guess you could do. And it's a good way for us to really see the screen as well as some of the infotainment stuff. So you can see that there's a bottom touch bar where you can now access all of your apps. This is a huge improvement over the existing car. Which, I really didn't like the screen in the air. Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know how to describe it, but the existing <laughs> infotainment wasn't great. Yeah. This looks like a huge step forwards. They fixed it. And they talked about how with this one, they redesigned the steering wheel to be a bit lower even so that you can have full view of this unobstructed display instead of it like chopping anything off there. And then this screen being here instead of like the thing that folds in and out, which I didn't really love that implementation. So I'm just looking here at the drive mode. So you have smooth, swift and sprint, same as before. And trailer mode is the new one. Ooh, okay. Okay. So it's not like an off-road setting. Uh, we have ride height selectable, looks like high. And then we also have regen braking uh, selectable on this particular one. Um, there's also different modes that you can go into. Is this like a way for us to interact with this or not really? No, it's literally an iPad Pro as a single They could have just used. <laughs> they could have printed, printed it. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. Um, but just gorgeous interior in this one. I love this brown on this one here. You can see this very intricate, almost Mercedes style straight lines. It's difficult to do this and line multiple panels up because any, you know, sort of difference shows to the eye very quickly. Yeah. You know, this is giving me huge Escalade vibes up here. Yeah. You know, the new uh, Escalade IQ. IQ. Yeah. <laughs> and all these interiors look good. I mean, usually I have a, like a significant favorite, but I think all these kind of work with it. They don't have a bad combo. My preference, Yosemite. Yeah. I love a white color interior, <laughs> loving this material here. All of this just works for me. The perforation is maybe optional, I'm not sure, but we know from the regular air you're getting, you know, massage, heated, cooled seats. There's also different scapes that you can put in here, like uh, moods, like Mercedes has this whole thing where you can hit like rejuvenate and it'll like do, you know, close the blinds, put the massage on. They'll even add scent in sometimes. Right. So they don't have this. I love like a Yosemite one with like where it pumps wood into your guitar. <laughs> Let's get this work on software before we get into scents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, I think that's that's going to be the, the interesting thing. The big question for me about the gravity is how is it going to interact and work with our charging infrastructure that's installed right now? Um, you know, we've we have driven Lucid more than most people have and driven them across the country a couple times, driven them up and down east and west coast. I just did 10,000 miles in out of spec Dave's before we got rid of it. And what I can come away saying is this is one of the best driving cars on the market from a chassis perspective, from a braking feel, from the way that the car gets into a corners. The motors are insane. They're so efficient. There's no question in my mind that Lucid has the best electric powertrain tech in the business. I mean, we can even show you just over this way, the electric motor that's powering the gravity here in the back. And it is unbelievably miniaturized it's super efficient it's oil cooled from multiple areas you can see they do their diff 
actually pre-reduction gear, so it spins at super high RPM. Like all these little things are just absolutely insane. You have a silicon carbide inverter on this really next level tech um, with the motors. I mean, there's no question. The problem has always been charging the car. <laughs> that's always been the biggest pain in the butt is it's at such high voltage yeah. that the existing infrastructure, mostly Signet chargers, would just have major issues with it. And we've covered that and we've exhaustively covered that. So we know that's a problem. I think Lucid made the right choice and said, hey, we'll adopt NAX. Yeah, because everyone will, so. <laughs> but when you charge a Lucid on a supercharger, superchargers only go up to 500 volts. Yeah. So you need to use the Wonder Box, the in-car box, which we could also mention gravity probably will have 80 amp, you know, 19.2 kilowatt AC charging. Um, it's going to do vehicle to vehicle charging, which is cool with the included mobile connector. So you can do, I don't know how many kilowatts, seven kilowatts. I don't remember yeah. car to car, which is really cool. And, um, yeah, I mean, all that stuff we know pretty well. The next conversation is what boosters in this one. That's what I want to know is yes. how fast can it charge on a voltage capped supercharger? And of course, Tesla's committed version four supercharging will go up to a thousand volts, which will natively interface with this vehicle. But. Uh, like we haven't seen one of those yet. We've only seen the dispensers, none of the chargers. So yeah. like every V4 that's in the ground today is still V3. Yeah. So how well will it work? I think everyone's assuming charging on Tesla superchargers will fix everything, but it is still Tesla made their chargers and their cars, so they will work. How well will they work with everything else? You know what I want to see is Lucid build their own charger. Oh. Because <laughs> they are, again, focused on efficiency to the max. And DC chargers in general are not that efficient. There's a ton of heat loss, yeah. a ton of losses everywhere. So I want to see the Lucid approach applied to DC charging. Yep. I think that would be incredible. That'd be interesting. Um, since we're here, let's just go do a quick blast by the 1,234 horsepower Lucid Air Set. One, two, three, four, yes. Um, there was, like, in the presentation this morning, you can tell when they unveiled the car that someone watched an Apple presentation. Yeah. <laughs> because it was in the exact style Apple does their stuff. They and even then, said one more thing, and all it was was them sitting in the frunk, and they called lame. it frunking. Frunking. Okay, we're not, we're not accepting that term. <laughs> but what we are... <laughs> hey, Paul, great to see you. Um, but uh, I thought they were going to say, and we're going to do a lucid gravity sapphire. That would be awesome. But it makes sick. sense to wait to unveil that, I guess. But yeah, yeah, this is sure. the sapphire, which fixes all most of my issues with the lucid air in general. And it just Huge looks so carbon good. wing for air management <laughs> on the back juicy tires, nice wide fenders, has the tri-motor drivetrain in this one, uh, 15 kilowatt heat exchanger to get all the hot stuff coming out of that rear motor. This is the best, craziest yep. thing you can buy. I've never even driven it and I'm saying that. So I don't know, Lucid has offered us a chance to drive one, but <laughs> I really, really have to have a go in this at yeah. some point because this is like a car built for me, quarter million dollars, but just seems next level. So I love this. The gravity seems like the right vehicle, definitely at the right time. This is, again, I understand why they didn't launch with the SUV, but I think Lucid may be better off there. Although we did meet a bunch of Lucid owners. We know a bunch of Lucid owners that love their cars. I love the car. The new software stack in here looks great. It's ground up. I think actually a completely new software than what's in the air. So I'm not sure how they'll manage both tracks from a software update perspective hopefully there's a lot of unknowns hopefully it's better and hopefully it stays good because i mean software is such a big deal in a car with a car you're interfacing with it through the software and there's so many cars that just don't do software well and it's yeah. really frustrating so that's the that's the new gravity let's it's got a little electra vibe in there yeah yeah a little lotus electra in here i mean i i'm just so thrilled with it i mean I can't wait to drive Dave, one. trade in your X. <laughs> go <laughs> back. <laughs> now that they've announced Nax, go for it. Yep. I mean, truly, this is uh, looks great. We know it's going to perform well. I'm interested in trying both chassis versions, both the you know the steel suspension as well as the air, because one thing Lucid did with the standard suspension on the air, like their actual air model, is uh, make that car drive incredibly well with yep. no air suspension or crazy roll stabilization, all these things. So. I have no question this is going to drive great. Yeah. I just can't wait to drive it. Yep. And same. of course, play around with it, sit inside and do an actual full tour video. Road trip it, car camp with it. I did try car camp. Well, I tried feeling what car camping would look like in the actual air, and it was a little rough. I fit, but like okay. you're, you're squeezed between that stupid clamshell thing. Yeah. Whereas this, oh my gosh, it's huge. Sky, canopy, and everything. So, yeah, love it. Uh, super thrilled with it. Nice job to the Lucid team. They uh, definitely knew what they were doing with this one. I think they took a lot of criticisms from the air and was like, okay, let's just address all of them yeah. in one package. 
even a great booth. They use real rocks. We had Subaru over there. Subaru has carpet that looks like rock. Oh, so Subaru has <laughs> fake rocks and Lucy yeah. has real... Oh, nice. <laughs> nice observation, Jordan. Hell yeah. Well, thank you guys for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. We'll see you on another one soon. There's plenty more to film here at the LA Auto Show. Bye-bye. First time sitting in the gravity. Yeah, welcome to the Clearview cockpit. Uh, I'm going to just uh, give you our welcome sequence just to sort of uh, effectively launch you here. Great. Um, and Dave, maybe you can introduce yourself and yeah. share because you have the coolest job I, leading all this. Yeah, I, I'm super excited to represent the UX team. A um, lot of great designers doing some really cool thinking. And uh, this is a great representation of what you're going to see when we launch gravity. So everything you see in here is intended to be part of that release. So I'm not trying to show you anything that's kind of way in the future we never deliver. Okay, um, even so the little remote start thing? Uh, what'll happen there is you'll see that as part of the walk, the walk-in uh, sequence. So okay. you open the door, uh, that'll be launched. Okay. And, uh, so you'll see that. Amazing. Here, this is a prototype just to give you the uh, sort of standard disclaimer. Mm -hmm. This isn't production UI yet. Sure. Uh, but it is representing our product, uh, production vision. And so the prototype here um, doesn't represent every functionality, but it's a good overview of the overall experience that we want to put. Amazing. So what can you do? Obviously, from the regular Lucid Air, I guess, we have three displays up right. front right. where you have all of your headlight lock, unlock, front trunk, basics functions, your main IP, and then your HMI over here with a secondary display for HVAC, driving settings, things like that. Right. And this is now one display. One continuous 34-inch OLED display. Uh, touch works in all those spaces, although on this prototype here, there are a few spots that, that uh, aren't touchable, but okay. everything will be on the production car. Very and, cool. And one of the things you'll notice, obviously, the, the position of the steering wheel, the shape of the wheel, your visibility, that's an unbroken display space where the mm -hmm. visibility of the information is much greater than what The wheel, did your team have anything to do with this at all? Uh, we collaborated on that. So okay. uh, we've got really great collaboration between all the different design disciplines at, at Lucid. So whether it's you know the folks who are working on the CMF or the interiors uh, or the UX and the screens, we're all collaborating on that. So we provide input to make sure that when we end up in a solution, that it sort of fits all of our different needs as designers. It's uh, uh, my opinion of the wheel is like great material, super thin compared to the air. Like this is what I would want a wheel to feel like. So I'm That's super crazy. thrilled with this. I totally understand why you went with the lower up top. You don't have the limitations of a yoke steering wheel, let's just say, but yes. you can still use it. Yeah, you can still crank over yeah. and grab that however you would normally naturally grab the it's wheel. It's so much better sitting in here than the photos would suggest. So I, first when I I saw this i was like no it's not good <laughs> but honestly uh this is a new type of wheel we're seeing coming in the industry not as bad as i thought off first glance so good well that's good to hear we'll encourage our audience to hold their feedback till they uh, sit in i think that's why it's yeah nice. um, <laughs> what's going on with the touch pods uh, that's here a great question so um you know we've got this amazing continuous touch display there and here but sometimes you want to keep your hands on the wheel and one of the things that we really care about at lucid from a design perspective is access to physical controls, tactical controls that fall to my fingertips and I can keep my hands and uh, you know not take them off to go do certain things at certain times. Mm -hmm. So with the new steering wheel, we have these new steering wheel controls. The upper part um, is a capacitive gesturable space. Okay. So they support swipes up and down. And so um, I'll show you in a second how that would work. These in the prototype are not functional, okay. but I'll show you the features that they enable. Yeah, and um, is this a glass surface? Uh, yes, it's, it's not glass, it's acrylic. Okay, but, it's acrylic, um, yeah. It's really cool, actually. Yeah, and it, it, feels, it feels really good, right? Yeah, it feels um, really nice, because in the middle bit, it's actually quite grippy compared right, to the out. Right, so you right. have a little bit more granular control with yep. a higher coefficient of friction, I guess, there. So that's nice. In yeah. those, you have a swipe, but you also have um, physical presses. So even though you can swipe, We'll also have in the cardinal directions presses, distinct presses up, down, okay. le uh, left and right, and then the center is a press. Separate from these we these uh, buttons, over on that side controlling ADAS. Okay. Uh, on this side, the uh, uh, speech, um, you know, our access voice, to Alexa, yep. voice command. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is a customizable control. So here and also on the CID, uh, these buttons and that button button can be customized to many different functions. Oh, cool. So our standard sort of HVAC controls, our volume knob, uh, but also these that we will start out and define, but you know, you want to make this one the glove box, that's, it comes to the glove box fine, you want to turn this one into another feature, or that one another feature. So you can have a quick heated seat, boom. Exactly. That's exactly. really nice, love that. So when you have these controls, what are they good for? Well, um, 
On the left side, where you see that uh, our driver widgets, the trip control, mm -hmm. um, there are different widgets there that you'll be able to scroll through. Okay. Um, to give you information about how the car's performing. Can um, we show some of those? I widgets? don't have any of those that uh, will work right now. But what would be so you have so navigation instance, instructions? Yeah, compass. Um, we're, we're working on, on an efficiency widget, so helping them drive right. as well as you can to conserve. Uh, a mileage. Yeah. So different bits of information about how the car is displaying. Yeah. One thing I'll also point out, you talked about car controls. On the left mm -hmm. side, that's our dynamic car control display. I'm going to put it in drive uh, very cleverly by touching over here. You didn't really see that. Okay. Cool. One thing you might have noticed is the screen changed, so there are fewer displays, fewer buttons displayed there. Okay. Um, yeah. These little internal yeah, went ones away, went away. Right? Yeah. Um, that's probably because you don't really want to open your trunk at 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. So what we do is try to manage clutter, manage the amount of information on the screen do it in an intelligent way. So when I'm driving, we can take things away that aren't really relevant. That's pretty um, smart. So you can uh, drive uh, and, and have common controls always accessible. Um, but then as we sort of move our way over, um, our sort of standard display now for information about uh, the speedometer, obviously, mm -hmm. I'm going to hit our 8S. Yep. So you would normally launch that from the steering wheel controls, mm -hmm. um, but we have a little prototype. Uh, cool to car blobs, too. You get lucid airs that go by yes. representing a sedan. Yes. Love that. We have a little motorcyclist here comes by. Yep. So oh, this is gorgeous. You know, reflecting again, sort of your your understanding, expanding your vision about what's around you. Yeah. Right? Will it? Um, do you know if it'll do auto lane changes and all that stuff? Um, we'll be launching with certain features on that uh, 8S system uh, over time. Though. Okay, cool. But that's all over the air software updatable. It is. Everything in here is over the air software updatable. We rely on that to continue to grow the experience and make sure it's as, as good as we can provide. It. And not asking for any comment, but we've recently seen some issues with OTA updates. Not anything to do with Lucid. Sure. Sure. But um, I guess, what is the rollout strategy? How do you test software before you roll it out? Because one thing I noticed in our Lucid Air was just the number of updates we got was right. huge. Yeah. And it was like every day, I'm like, okay, we're getting little patches here and yeah. there. Um, excuse me, sir. We have a pretty strong quality team that mm -hmm. focuses relentlessly on making sure that things that we put out in our over uh packages have been tested really thoroughly. Uh, it's a great, strong team. And uh, as a design team, engineering team, a quality team, we're very closely together to make sure that we define the features that we want really thoroughly with their input, uh, and that we've got a very rigorous testing process to make sure that we don't have those kinds of unfortunate situations where um, you know, a car becomes less than what it was due to an OTA instead of more than what it was. Sure. I think what's really good and the thing that I've really brought home from driving connected vehicles for years is to know that there's a team of people constantly working on the product that you own to make it better. Yep. It's not like it just gets left in the dust after you own it. And that oh, like increases the perceived value of the car drastically. A lot of percentage of my t team's time is uh, still focused on air. Wow. Um, right. You know, we, we have a, a lot of huge uh, work to do with gravity, but um, we do sort of three things. We're, we're, we're designing for gravity. We also have in mind air. Mm -hmm. because we want those experiences that a user has in air and gravity to be from the same family. Right. Will they always be the same? Maybe not, because you mentioned earlier those three separate screens, you've got mm -hmm. a, a portrait display orientation uh, in air versus landscape here, so there'll be some minor changes. But our goal is to make it feel like their family. I can get on one into the other and feel really good about it. Yeah. So talk to me a bit more about that in terms of we have a lot of viewers who own air. Right. And so, you know, they might be thinking, I would be thinking gravity's out, new displays, mm -hmm. all this cool new stuff. Are they going to get left in the dust? Or right. There's obviously going to be some features I would think that gravity can do that air can't. Sure. What's that look like? Well, um, without sort of enumerating what those are, because we don't really know, but our intent is to make sure as much as we can possibly put into air from gravity will work. I'll give you an example. Those car controls over there, if you're familiar with the current air car controls mm -hmm. that are in that left side of the screen, yep. um, there's no functional reason why we can't provide that decluttered space in that in sure. the area in air. Right? Um, similarly, um, one of the things that you're going to see here as we start to talk about multitasking, mm -hmm. uh, one of the huge requests that we, we hear from our community uh, that we're responding to in uh, in gravity and we'll bring back into air at the right point is that i can have you know independence in these functions so i can have a navigation oh, screen here this is so nice because <laughs> you used to have the map and then you would right, pull it down right, right. yeah so we can still satisfy those things yeah so, you know on our new home display where these tiles represent 
at a glance information about the applications that are running and quick access to the core tasks. I can still do a little bit of a swipe here to bring that down, sure. but they operate independently. So um, I can keep these either together because potentially I want to see that same view at the same time, even though if I do something here, it doesn't have to change what's up here. And the speed at which it's responding to your touch, you know, like in air, you have to wait for the map room right, to load. Right. This uh, is so much is a faster. huge improvement that uh, we're making. I mean, the, the engineering team has done a great job trying to think through, like, how do we architecturally create headroom for us to continue to drive value over right. time, not just in the first thing that we build. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tremendous improvement in our performance with this vehicle uh, and, the, and the processor that we have in place. So, I can do this, Whoa. but they can also do that, <laughs> right? And so, Does it have route planning in, it in this one yet? Yeah, it will. It will, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having this sort of independence uh, is a key thing. We listen to our audience are telling us that they really would like to have this degree of value and we can do that. The other thing that we'll do is um, now that I've got uh, you know, a route plan and I'm uh, in, in motion. Um, if I choose a different view up here, I can still get turn by turn. So right. our application widget space is. And what I we feel call like that. this came to Lucid Air about six months ago, we, something like we that. Intentionally, here's an interesting sort of part of this story. So we were designing for gravity, but then wanted to bring that in to air. So trying to find oh, those cool. places to move gravity into air, not yeah. just wait until gravity launches, yeah. but to take advantage of those things that we can, that we've already begun to work on with an engineering team to move those backwards where we can. Amazing, loving everything I'm seeing here. Love this display. And even regardless of software, just like the seating position in the car, the wheels kind of cool. Everything looks super high quality, and it's just a very early prototype. So. It, it is, and uh, you know, we spend a lot of attention to detail. And even though there's a lot of information on here, you know, one of the things that you might have seen in the uh, in our presentation here is this in digital detox mode, right? So, yeah, I can have lots of different screens happening here, but sometimes uh, I just want to take it all away. I just want to take the noise away. Oh, that's I nice. Bring things into a, a quieter mode. Um, and so we think about this, right? There's a kind of, um, you know, a bit of a backlash on all these screens and all the information that I'm inundated with. Absolutely. Um, and so we're listening to that too. And we're trying to say, okay, how, what are the moments? What are the times where I just want less? You know, I want to, to sort of feel like um, the information is there when I need it, but uh, not when I don't. And so as much as we want to add value, sometimes we realize we just need to have a little bit less on screen. Sure, absolutely. Um, one thing I will show you about the steering wheel control is that you asked earlier about. Yeah. Um, in terms of the gestures that we support, again, um, when we think about interactions with these screens, of course you can reach over and touch things at any point. You can reach over and decide that you wanted to pick a song. But there are times when I want to keep my hands on the wheel and be able to quickly access core things. So. If, for instance, I were to swipe here, I'm going to do this here, but I could swipe mm -hmm. on the steering wheel, and now I'm getting at the most recent songs. And that would be just sources, doing this Just motion. doing what you did in there. Yeah. Um, the most recent places that I visited. Oh, right? wow. So I can keep my hands on the wheel, quickly move through these applications. Love that. Recent, uh, I'm sure you benchmark a bunch of cars, but the only other car that has something similar that I can think of would be like Mercedes-Benz UX. Right. And that is, I have a Sprinter as an example, like uh -huh. not electric, but yes. the screen's so far away in that, that I almost just use this right, to right. use at the UX. We actually benchmark that car. They, you know, yeah. uh, Mercedes-Benz, I respect them a lot. Um, yeah. One of the things that we decided to do here is be a little bit uh, different in how we approach what that gesture does. Uh, one of the things that that control does is move through every element on the screen right, right. to navigate. Um, we actually did studies on that and found that that was actually a little bit more distracting. It took a little bit more time. Totally, because you have to go like three menus over and then right, down and right, select. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah. our observation was that we want to be thoughtful about making these just about these big coarse gestures. Yeah. It's actually quicker to reach over and tap something on the screen and bringing it that information down into this space where it's a little bit more ergonomically accessible. Totally. Um, and being able to reach over and poke something really quickly as opposed to sort of getting in this trap where I'm having to navigate through each item. It was something that we wanted to pay attention to. Well, I can't thank you enough for the tour on this. We'll show you one more thing. Oh, great. There's more. One we're more in. No, we're in no rush. This too. is great. So we talked about sanctuary. So sanctuary, you know, cars are, are more than just transportation, right? They're a place of refuge or places we spend time alone, time with family. Um, and we are paying attention to trends that are in the in the in the world today, not just in the in the car space. Um, and we felt it was going to be really important to give you these ways in which oh, cool. all of this can pay off in a different way. These 
screens, the ambient lights, the HVAC, the sound system, the seat, the massage, the angle, uh, so we can take you to these more immersive places. Get a little relaxation. Well, instantly, the lighting changed. You even have right. lighting almost projected onto the dash yeah, so, here. So this dynamic ambient light gives you this subtle glow of information. Cool. Um, it'll actually give you a way to sort of see and feel a little bit more uh, amazing. being into the space. This display is crazy. It's pretty it's beautiful. Yeah. It's was beautiful the design display. intention of Air to have this display originally rather than the three? It was just a technological... Yeah, there's some limitations early on, yeah. and uh, you know the state of the art now with these glasses, beautiful OLED screen, yeah. uh, rich blacks, you know, and and the sense of, of crispness in the images is really important for us. Um, it's not just about sort of these visual images. We know we've talked about that uh, we've partnered with Metatopia on content. It can give you sort of guided. You need this while you're exactly. well, at, a, at a charger yeah, that's too slow. Let's relax. At the end of a car show, I sit back in here, <laughs> or we're charging. And this is great. Having the seat positioned in the right space yep. to do that relaxation. Um, different kinds of information that we can provide here. Um, you know, breathing exercises, something that just happens very quickly. I, you know, I, I get home from a long commute. I'm not going to yep. go into the house until I re relax a little bit. You know, yep. having someone guide me through this just briefly before I move out is it's like uh, my watch does that well, it's like breathe right you're annoyed at the charger right breathe um, uh, <laughs> we great. have our, our sort of karaoke space oh no um, way we call this on stage you know for us okay. the idea is that um, this is kind of a performance space right this is a place where I can be you know myself I can sing with others I can have fun um, and really wanting to, to put this in a space where you know the lights the information <laughs> this is so cool you know uh even up here this light's going too uh giving you sort of a little bit more of a performance space and then lastly uh something we call occasions which for us is about you know recognizing sometimes there are these events that happen in our lives how can we be there too so here i would just get in the car key cycle and this would be the start up there uh, right? cool so that startup display i showed you earlier uh, instead, it's a happy new year, happy anniversary, happy birthday, those kinds of yeah, moments in my life. Just connecting with the customers exactly. more. I mean, you launched the referral program recently is another way exactly. to like, have that great touch point. Um, Very much so. This is the correct direction, in my opinion. Not that well, I'm like a great company analyst or anything, but well, I just I love it. all these little things. Yeah, you know, I think one thing you'll see uh, in any Lucid experience, physical or digital, is really uh, focused attention to detail. And, and that sense that we need to give back to the user. We really want to focus on what they need uh, and, and give these moments of delight, right? These little magic moments um, where it becomes more than just a car. Uh, it becomes something that I can really fall in love with. Yeah, I love it. Are there any other Easter eggs or anything <laughs> cool that we could share secretly to our audience uh, that you want I to think talk I've about? I've been pretty open kimono with you. I think you have uh, been I as well. Uh, I didn't know about any of these things. That was super cool. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you uh, got a chance to see it. Um, you know, we're yeah. super excited. Uh, you know what? I would love to show that when that one's not working. <laughs> That's totally fine. No, 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 it's all good. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. No, thank you so much for the tour, Dave. That was amazing. Nice work on all of this. Thank you very much. And um, excited to watch it progress as you get closer to series production. Awesome. Yeah. Thank Great. you, sir. Thank you. All right. We have a six foot ten person now in the third row, and we're putting the second row back. <laughs> hop in. That's great. Yeah, Peter's no, getting them tucked in. Then you have to duck, yeah? Yeah, okay. It's a great marketing. <laughs> I can't tell if it's a good or bad. He's, 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 he's six foot, but this gentleman's six ten. That's pretty good. Hang on a second. All right. Johnny's getting photos. A quick one. First little car. Car. We moved the two modules from under the rear seat to there to under the front seat. You know, the two modules are higher up. We move them forward. So we've got super flat here. And we've still got a 22 module pack enabling over 440 miles of road. Hell so yes. It's a very similar pack. All the two in your vista are literally the same. Just that tweak, we get a flat floor, all the seating capability, and the range. And, Epic. and, and uh, Alex, not that your opinion matters because you're, you know, uh, in the edge case, but how is it back there at 610? It could be worse. It could okay. be worse. The headroom, I think, headroom is fine. I think you'd be right there. Oh, yeah, certainly, certainly. Yeah. It's just the legroom mostly, no, like my knees are here. But well, you are 610. Yeah, so. but, but, but the headroom, headroom is fine. 
So, sure. And I, yeah. So hang on. Just let me move that. <laughs> They're sliding the second row up now. Six foot ten. Yeah. I'll come around. Come, come here. Sure, sure, sure. Sorry. Okay. Rear windows down. I'm going to squeeze through this way. <laughs> Six foot ten. That's amazing. <laughs> we've, we've I mean, that's not had, bad. We've had multiple six, 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 sevens. That's common. That's short. Six tens. That's, that's yeah. what I call short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was six, six when I was like 17. You so look down on the six, six. six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. go. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you for demonstrating that. <laughs>